Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, the goal is to be able to understand what a polar covalent bond is, to be able to determine the type of bonding based on electronegativity, and also to be able to draw Lewis dot structures that show or support the specific type of bonding we just classified. Now, so far in chemistry, we should all have an understanding that covalent bonds deal with the sharing of electrons. And ionic bonds deal with the transfer of electrons. But what about a blend between the two? And what we end up having is what's known as a polar covalent bond. So sharing is just like you have four slices of pizza and I have four slices of pizza. That is 100% even sharing. In chemistry, it doesn't always happen. When elements share electrons, they can share electrons unevenly. All right, it's kind of like I have five slices of pizza and someone else would have three, and we're sharing one pie. That is considered uneven sharing. So polar covalent bond is a blend. It's kind of a halfway point between a pure covalent bond and a pure ionic bond. And I want you to think of it like this. Nonpolar covalent bonds don't have any plus minuses associated with them. All right, we said the elements kind of had a zero charge. In ionic bonds, we saw that we had massive positive and massive negatives. For instance, magnesium had a two plus charge. We saw that oxygen had a two minus charge. And we associated ionic bonds with bonds between these ions. Well, if covalent bonds have zero charge, a pure covalent bond of total even sharing, and ionic bonds have these big charges, I want you to think of the whole entire spectrum in between a zero charge and a big charge as a polar covalent bond. All right, And they range from very small positive negative charges to a very big positive negative charges, almost but not nearly the same as an ionic bond. The framework upon which this lesson rests on is the, your knowledge of electronegativity. Now, a little review here is electronegativity is how strongly an atom will attract or specifically pull electrons to itself in a bond. It's what we call an atom strength. And so far what we've seen is that the smaller atoms, such as this guy over here, are stronger. And the larger atoms, like this guy over here, are the weaker ones. And then the stronger element, or the smaller element, will pull the electrons closer to itself in a chemical bond. That's right. The more electronegative element will always pull electrons towards itself, away from the larger, less electronegative element. Another thing for today is I'm going to be using the term polar. And in science, polar simply means positive and negative. And something that is polar will have one side positive and one side negative. Let's start off, guys. A nonpolar covalent bond, all right? Nonpolar means no poles. It deals with an even sharing of electrons. Now, if we look at the picture here, this is actually a picture between two fluorines. Each fluorine has an electronegativity value. That's what this is. So the 4.0 that you see there is an electronegativity value that I have looked up and I've simply written here. You wouldn't know it. You wouldn't be asked to memorize it. And I want you to see that both elements here, both fluorines, have the same electronegativity. And a second ago, I said electronegativity is the strength of an element to pull this shared set of electrons towards itself. It's like a tug of war over these electrons. What I want you to see, though, is that because they both have the same strength, the electrons are not going to move anywhere. And when they don't move anywhere, we're not going to get any plus minuses. No, so no poles means no plus minuses associated with this nonpolar covalent bond. Now, I want you to key in on this. When I have an even sharing of electrons, as I have in a nonpolar covalent bond, the, electro the electronegativity difference is specifically going to be between these two. Now, how did I get that? I took 4.0 from the one atom, I subtract the 4.0 from the other atom, and I end up with a zero difference in electronegativity. These values come from what's known as the Pauling scale. And you can look it up if you want, the Pauling scale. So a 4 on the Pauling scale minus another 4 gives me 0, and 0 falls with, within this range, telling me that it is a nonpolar covalent bond. 
Now, that's a little different from this. A polar covalent bond deals with the uneven sharing of electrons. That's right, the electrons that are in between the two atoms here, in this case is oxygen and fluorine, they're sharing these electrons right here. The electrons are going to migrate or be pulled towards the more electronegative element. Now, oxygen has a Pauling scale rating or electronegativity value of 3.5. That's pretty electronegative, but I want you to see when I subtract these two values of 4.0 minus 3.5, I end up with a 0 0.5 of my difference. That now falls between 0.4 and 2.0. That is the value range that I need to be a polar covalent bond. And what's going to happen is a slight pole, a slight plus minus will be created. The next slide should show this. So what ends up happening here, guys, is that oxygen will have its electrons moved away towards the fluorine, the more electronegative element. I'm kind of also trying to show you that the more electronegative elements are smaller in size. Their atomic size is smaller. And that's kind of what I'm showing here. Oxygen's a little bit bigger. When the electrons move in that direction, fluorine becomes negative meaning oxygen then becomes positive. And what you're often going to see in chemistry textbooks and chemistry help videos is probably something like this. I try to draw an arrow down here. This arrow shows the directions the electrons are moving towards the more electronegative element. And they also throw a little plus on the back there to remind you that oxygen is getting a plus attached to it, fluorine a negative, because a negative is moving that direction. So this atom right here becomes slightly negative, and this atom here becomes slightly positive. What have I created? A polar bond. Because this becomes negative, oxygen becomes positive, and what I've created here is a pole. Remember, a pole was one side positive and one side negative. Lastly, ionic bonds, they don't deal with the sharing or the uneven sharing, they deal with the transfer of electrons. What I'm trying to demonstrate in this picture here is that I have an element like oxygen, which has an electronegativity rating of 3.5, and calcium. Calcium is a very large element. It's bigger than oxygen, and it has a low electronegativity value. And when you subtract 3.5 minus 1, we end up with an electronegativity difference of 2.5 on the Pauling scale. That value is greater than 2, and that difference classifies it as an ionic bond. Now, what's happened here is that an ion has been created. Oxygen has acquired 2, has taken, has transferred 2 of calcium's outer shell electrons. And therefore, oxygen now gets what's known as a 2 minus charge. And calcium loses 2 electrons, it becomes a 2 plus charge. So the difference here is that I've actually created legitimate ions. And ions are nothing more than very large poles. And they are created by the transfer of electrons. And I, I could actually draw an arrow and draw this side positive if I want to, but in reality you see what's happening. The electrons have been lost and went over to oxygen. So what is the big story here? In this case, oxygen becomes totally negative. Not slightly, but totally. And calcium becomes totally positive, once again, not slightly, as you saw in the past. And I'm going to drill this point home here again. The differences in electronegativity values are going to generate these poles. The larger the difference in electronegativity values, as you saw, generates a larger pole. The largest pole that could be created would be making an ionic bond or an ion. The smallest pole that you can create would be a nonpolar covalent bond, as we saw, such as fluorine bonded to another fluorine. Because of the same electronegativity value, this pair of electrons is going to be shared evenly, generating no poles. And a polar covalent bond, therefore, is anything in between there. From electronegativity value and difference of 0 0.4, all the way up to the difference being 2.0, this whole spectrum is a polar covalent bond, illustrating that the poles are getting larger as my difference in electronegativity is increasing. 
So in summary, my bonds can be classified by electronegativity. If I have a non-polar covalent bond, that's considered even sharing between the two elements. If I have a polar covalent bond, that means between the two elements it's uneven. And lastly, an ionic bond deals with not just an uneven, but a total transfer of electrons. No sharing going on here. The differences to classify nonpolar, polar, and ionic fall within these ranges, and these are ranges you'll need to have to memorize for a test or a quiz. We're going to use H2O as an example to illustrate bonding. So I'm going to draw my Lewis dot structure for H2O, and H2O has a, a bent structure to it, and so I'm going to try to draw it kind of bent as well. Kind of the first step you do in Lewis dot structure is going to be count the total number of valence electrons and the six, seven, and eight. We have eight electrons. The next step would be to draw your skeleton structure, which we did. Now we're going to place the remaining electrons here, and it looks something like this. So oxygen is going to be in the middle, hydrogens are going to be on the side, and we're going to have what's known as a bent structure because these extra pair of electrons and oxygen, they're known as unshared pairs, repel the structure downward. I want to go ahead now and label each element with its electronegativity value. So H becomes a 2.2, that's its value on the Paulding scale. Oxygen has an electronegativity value of 3.4. I think on a previous slide I might have put down 3.5. Either way, this should be very close. I want to find the difference between these two elements. And I'm going to be focusing on the individual oxygen and the individual hydrogen, and then again over here. So the question right now is these element, these electrons right here, that is a bond between the two elements. What kind of a bond is that? And we're going to take 3.4 minus 2.2 to find the electronegativity value, the difference of 1.2. So we have a 1.2 difference right here. And that means over here, 3.4 minus 2.2 is going to give me a 1.2 difference in electronegativity as well. The difference of 1.2 classifies that bond, that shared pair of electrons, as a polar covalent bond. And that's right, this dude over here is considered a polar covalent bond as well. Because it's a polar covalent bond, that means the electrons are going to move a little bit. They're going to move towards the more electronegative element. And they're going to move like this, towards oxygen. The electrons will move towards oxygen. The back side of that arrow, as you recall before, became positive. So what we have here is a polar covalent bond where oxygen now becomes kind of negative, a little bit negative, and hydrogen becomes a little bit positive. And that is the whole gist in my bond. I could also draw it right here, too. I could draw the oxygen becoming a little bit negative and the hydrogen becoming a little bit positive. So the gist here, guys, is that we're trying to use a Lewis dot structure to show and explain or support a visual picture of polar covalent bonding. How about in this last example here? What type of bond is going to form within NCl3? So this is going to be nitrogen trichloride, and nitrogen is my central atom. Chlorines are going to be around it like this. We're going to put our shared pair of electrons right there. Those shared pair of electrons are the actual three bonds that we'll be looking at. They're three single covalent bonds. And to finish off our Lewis dot structure, I'll just put my extra electrons that are not being used right now around chlorine. Let's label the electronegativity values. All right, dudes, next step would be to subtract the values to find out the difference. And it's 3.2 minus 3.0 gives me a 0 0.2 and that's going to be the same for every one of my bonds here each one of my bonds is considered nonpolar covalent because the 0 0.2 the difference between these two means that nitrogen although it's a little weaker than chlorine is not significantly weaker and therefore my electrons really are not going to move that much it's considered an even sharing of electrons and therefore, we call this a non-polar covalent bond. Really, non-polar means no pluses and no minuses. And that's what you see here. 
you literally just see that there is an even sharing of electrons and I haven't drawn any pluses and minuses. And if I'm going to backtrack this slide, what I mean is that here we saw a negative and we saw a positive, a negative and a positive, and a pole plus minus was formed. And we don't see that here. All right, guys, that's all for tonight. I hope it was helpful. I hope you got this down now. Tune in again to watch some more videos, okay? Thanks a lot, guys. Peace.